Hello, everybody, and welcome to Talk About It Tuesday. My name is Alexandra, and I will be your host today, joined by the amazing, incomparable, in intellectual, ama uh, incredible, in you know, stupendous Stefan. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello, Internet. Woo. Uh, so we have known Stefan for a very long time. Um, so much so that he was a part of the OG cast of This Is Improv. Right. That's right. I was there for, I think, your, the first meeting of This Is Improv. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. First yeah. meeting at the dining room table, you know? It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> great. Uh, so, Stefan, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, so, my name is uh, Stefan Pineda. Um, I was lucky enough to meet Alex and Angelica in college. Um, we've been friends ever since. We hit it off. Uh, since then, I, after graduating college, did professional theater and in South Florida, transitioned into film and television, came out to LA to do some film and television. Now I do film, TV, voiceover, you know, anyone that's willing to pay, yeah. I'm there. Yeah, you know? yeah. sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I feel like voiceover is the way to go oh, around yeah. this time. Oh, Definitely. yeah. It's been, that's, that's been the thing that I feel like everyone is, that, that's the one industry that hasn't even slowed down really. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the animators can keep animating and they just need the voices to come in. Yeah. Because they can do a lot remotely. They can do everything at home. What? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, cool. So what, what would you say is like that moment where you got bit by the acting bug and you're like, wow, this stuff, this is my life. I, you know, it's funny because I think I've actually, I think it hit me before I even realized it hit me. Because mm -hmm. even as a child, I was a little bit method as a child. Uh, there was a full year of my life when I was four that I was convinced I was Wolverine, like the superhero. Nice. Uh, I didn't speak any English, so I would just say like, mis cuchillos. <laughs> and I would run around like this for like, it was over a year. And That's I would like awesome. call my dad Sabretooth. He did not like it. Uh, he got over that very quickly. Even when my sister was born, I, I told my parents, I can't hold her. My knives are out. Don't want to hurt her. No, you know what you I can't. mean? Yeah. So, honestly, it's been kind of a part of me ever since then. I've always loved history and telling stories and doing stuff like that. And then when I finally got to middle school, I kind of got the chance to join a group of like-minded people that also wanted to tell stories and wanted to, you know, bring it to life. So yeah. I think that would be the official time, but it's really been there the entire time. You know? I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, our grandma used to dress us up, and our mom would say that we looked like little street walkers because we had the <laughs> love, <laughs> love okay. right? She would put us in these little little heels and like glitter, and then like lots of jewelry, and then the oh, dress. Yeah. And I was like, "Mama, I am not a street walker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fancy lady. What I was a fancy." Fancy lady, and Mima was very proud of that. I would love to see some of these pictures. That would oh, be a great. Oh, back. we'll send them when we find yeah. them. Oh yeah. When you think of acting, mm -hmm. how do you think that it affected your everyday life? You know, getting into the theater world. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's a great question because people don't realize how much it can affect everything about what you do. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not just like the creativity and stuff. That stuff is like surface level, but also just like the learning to work with different people, the learning to work in high stress situations, the mm -hmm. ability to present something in front of hundreds of people, to be vulnerable in front of other people. Yeah. It's stuff that's kind of invaluable and it helps you in every kind of job. I mean, I've never gotten at any normal, let's say, you know, job that I had in college, like retail or anything, communication, never an issue for me. Because I, you know, you you're taught to be able to communicate, right. to understand, to collaborate. Yeah. You know, and I feel like there's a lot of people that have that struggle with that. I struggle yeah. with just teamwork and team building and things like that and being a part of something. It's mm -hmm. kind of like sports in a way. I've always thought of theater that it gives you kind of the same thing that sports gives you, except for there's no other team. You're yeah. your own other team. There's no one fighting you to to not nail that line. You know, there's no one trying to pat, you know, slap you down or anything. You know, no one's no gonna tackles, no red flags. No. Right, right. It's just you. And because of it, it's kind of the purest sense of that teamwork mm -hmm. that sports already kind of has, you know? Because ideally, if there was no other team, you'd score a touchdown every time. And yeah. I think that's what we as actors try to do. We practice, we rehearse, and we try mm -hmm. to score a touchdown on every possible line. Yeah. Yeah, it, it makes sense. I mean, we 
compare it to sports all the time. They have the yeah. Improv Olympics, you know, which now is just IO, but they have <laughs> <laughs> copyright. <laughs> uh, so with IO, it's that mentality of like, this is a sport. This is a theater yeah. sport. You are you are there to work with someone and you need to work with someone so that you can win over the audience. That's your goal. That's yeah. just your only goal is to bring them into your world and make sure that they're having a ball just like you are. Yeah. Because, you know, you can have a ball and they might not be having a ball. Right, right. <laughs> I think we've all been there. I mean, yeah. It might happen every <laughs> once in a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's definitely, definitely that, con that comparison and even, even the competitive drive I yeah. find with actors, you know, sometimes, yes, of course, there's that competition of the audition process and right. who's going to get the role, X, Y, Z, whatever. But at the end of the day, even the ensemble is the most important person in the room. So, exactly. I mean, there's that super famous quote, there's no small parts, there's only small actors. And that's the right. truth. You know, yeah. you can really make the most of it. And I think it's more being competitive, not even necessarily with each other, but like mm -hmm. with yourself and with bringing out the best in each other. Yeah. Because you know, you see someone nail a scene, you're like, wow, that was so awesome. I can't wait to join in and right. make it better or try yeah. to uplift it. You know, no one ever thinks like, oh, I can't believe my my castmate did well. That never happened. You know? like, <laughs> they laughed at his sure joke. Like... <laughs> that's, that's, that's what we're trying to do. We're, if, you know, if it's a comedy, we're trying to make everyone laugh. So it's, yeah. it's great when that happens. And I feel like that's kind of the, the difference in the, com the competitiveness, right? Because I mean, you know, yeah. if it's a sport, you know, you throw an elbow or something. You don't throw an elbow in improv no. unless you're going for a flop. Okay. You know? Yeah, it's true. It's true. Your goal is to make your cast laugh. <laughs> that's, that's what you want. It's like, I want to break you so much. Yes, yes. <laughs> so we're just going to go until I break you. <laughs> Yep, that's our little that's our little thing that's our little battle that chess game that we're playing on stage that the audience can sometimes pick up on but yeah. it hopefully doesn't yeah right <laughs> so wait when you when you started doing improvisational techniques mm -hmm. like from script to improv how do you think it it differs for you in terms of process in terms for me in terms of process like improv is so much more vulnerable because it mm -hmm. really is just you are given almost complete creative freedom. Mm -hmm. So there's no, it's all on you. It's, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of different because with the script, you know, it's, oh, these are the lines of somebody else that I'm trying to bring to life. With improv, a lot of times, all you have is, as you know, just like a scenario. Mm -hmm. And you have to bring your own personal creativity to it, right. which I think was a little bit of a challenge at first for me, mm -hmm. uh, going from, you know, doing something like Shakespeare or something that's been done a million times that you can see a million different ways and be inspired to just jumping into any situation and trying to capture something magical, trying to get some lightning in a bottle. Um, I also think that the, um, the kind of like intensity of improv, the kind of just like trial by fire of improv mm -hmm. is a little daunting at times, you know, at yeah. times for me at first, especially. Um, the whole just like, okay, you're up, you know, and it's like, okay, I, I have nothing prepared. Yeah. Sure. We're a desert, love deserts, you know, and then you just kind of have to go with that. But I think yeah. because of that, it really helps you learn to think fast and think on yeah. your feet. Um, Definitely. Yeah. You don't, you don't have the time, you know, it's not a 12 week rehearsal process. It's not a four week rehearsal process. It's a you know, you have chemistry and you hope you get in a situation and you just try to bring it to life. And there's something so magical about being in that moment of creativity mm -hmm. that you can't find anywhere else. That's something unique to improv where it's just like that happened right there and will never happen exactly like that ever again. Yeah. You know? But it's so magical, mystical, glittery, you know? So, so good. So good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy because I find the more we do these interviews and things mm -hmm. like that, we sound so hippie because we're like it's like it's a loving judgment-free creative environment we're creative it's art man it's yeah, just yeah, love each other. Like it's like, yeah dude it's so awesome oh, thanks, <laughs> <laughs> it just it's whole it just always feels that way and i find awesome. it so funny because you're so that's how it's supposed to be it's supposed awesome. to be that in any kind of environment I mean, we, we go into corporate and you've got someone calling himself the big hug bear. And I'm like, you're the, first of all, you're six foot four and giant yeah, and yeah. you look scary as heck. Everyone is terrified of you. Now all 10 of your employees are like, oh my gosh, she gives hugs. 
exactly and you just find such amazing things and like just the craziest of places especially with environment work mm -hmm. that you just kind of you don't realize that you're doing it at some point you don't realize that you're keeping track of where everything is on the table it's crazy it really is it really is and it's something that you know is so unique in, our, in the performing arts mm -hmm. you know and it's something that exists across the performing arts which i think is cool you know mm -hmm. that that idea of just bam create yeah it's, it, it doesn't matter what type of art you do people have you know they improv dance and they improv you know singing and they improv you know music sometimes yeah. i've seen people improv a musical but you know it's crazy you know <laughs> it's, it's it's nuts Seeing those kinds of musicals blow my mind. And oh yeah, and, and in Chicago and IO, they do improvised Shakespeare. So yeah. they do a full two acts of a Shakespearean play in, like that. I was lucky enough when I first came to Los Angeles to go to Groundlings and oh, I saw yeah. somebody improv a full one act, right? Or not, I'm sorry, not a one act, a one person show. So it was just an hour of this person. We gave him three or four random ass characters. He had three random objects up there and he had to just create an entire one person, you know, act, story and act. It was awesome. An OPA. It was, it was just nuts. crazy. It, it's so, it's so cool to see that people yeah. just freaking, they just do it, you know? Yeah. Dive in. That's the only I way to do it. Don't think twice. Mm -mm. <laughs> <Great mind. laughs> Improv. <laughs> Okay, so uh, th this is a difficult question. Oh, I'm ready. Uh, what is your favorite theater exercise or game? That's literally everyone's first reaction, that deep sigh. <laughs> you know, people don't understand. Like, I mean, people that are in the theater obviously get it, but a lot of people don't get yeah. that. We, like, we play so many games and they're, they're and all... We love them all. Exactly. And I mean, you, you know, we wouldn't play them if we didn't like them. Uh, <laughs> We're professionals at this point, like there's no reason to do it. Um, but I think when it comes to improv and everything, I, whether you call it freeze or switch mm -hmm. or whatever, that's probably my favorite one where it's just two people up there doing their thing and it's, you know, freeze or switch or, you know, I've played it both ways. Freeze and then you completely change the situation. I think that gets the most creative juices flowing. And especially if you get really good, like, you know, when you're with a good group of people that know when to freeze it, <laughs> when to freeze the scene. Because like I mean- editing time. Yeah, exactly. And they find like a good moment to do it where it really makes sense. Where it's like mm -hmm. hands on hips or like pointing and it's something completely different right after. Yeah. That's, that's gotta be my favorite game just because it really gets me into the flow of the, you know, yeah. the another hippie <laughs> thing. A little nine right. <laughs> the flow of the moment, dude. Going with it, man. <laughs> I find that Freeze is such a free form game because mm -hmm it really doesn't have as many rules as the other games. Right. So you kind of just go for it. We even tried because we had been playing Freeze so much during the live shows that we started turning around and calling Freeze on a line rather than- Oh, moving. that's fun. So that then when we turn around, we're like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. I didn't want this, but okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, and it's just, it's such a game that you can play around with and, yeah. and make so versatile that it's like, oh, this game, we could do anything with this game. <laughs> That's my favorite thing about it. And yeah, you're 100% right. What's your favorite game? Has anyone asked you? Has anyone thrown the question back? Um, I had said it was, uh, oh God, what is it called? Why are you late? Because I love puzzles. So it's, a, it's just a guessing game. And yeah. it's such a simple game, but my favorite part was the audience is so involved in it because they're the ones that picked it. And because yeah. I'm really good at guessing, Angelica and Nunu would make it harder and harder each time. Mm -hmm. So they would pile it on. And the audience, when I would get it, they're like, no, 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 like she's really good. Please, <laughs> the most complicated things. And the only word I really messed up on was meteor. Mm. I didn't get meteor. I thought it was meatball the entire time. <laughs> the entire time. I was like, space, meatballs, Sunny with a chance of meatballs. No? <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, that was, that was fun. I think it's just because literally everyone is in on it. Except yeah. Me. So was, the audience loves that, dude. Being in on a joke. I mean, you know, they've been doing it in comedy since day one. Yeah. You know? It's the best thing ever to like, for us to know and them not to. It's just, it's yeah. great. It's like our little it's secret. Little, it's not <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's never gonna get it. <laughs> you know? I love asking this question. If I saw you mm -hmm. 
like walking down the street. And I was like, oh my God, who's that? Who's that, who's that person over there? What can't I tell just by looking at you? Like a fun fact or a hobby or like anything random that you're like, no, him? <laughs> um, I think that just by looking at me, you might not be able to tell that I am the absolute biggest nerd on the face of the earth. Um, I think that you could look at me and be like, oh, he probably likes like one thing. And little do they know that I like have every Game of Thrones book, that I have everything J.R. Tolkien's ever written, that I have everything Marvel comics, that I like go really deep. Like that's my thing when people try to introduce me to something new, I have to be like, listen guys, <laughs> I can't because I'm only either all in or not. Like I'm, I'm not, I don't know how to be a casual fan. Yeah. Of anything. So yeah. I either know everything about like Warhammer or like, I don't know anything. And that's, that's like me. So I think people would be surprised if they were like, you know, other people would be like, oh, I like Lord of the Rings. And I'd be like, oh my God, I've read it 40 times. And I just finished reading, you know, J.R. Tolkien's biography about himself. Like why? Why not? What is that going to get me? Exactly. And you know, he's still coming, Christopher Tolkien's still coming out with new books. I just got his newest book this year, read it at the beginning of the quarantine. Baron and Luthien loved it, you know? Can maybe speak passable Elvish, you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. what most people would be like, oh, for sure, that guy walking down the street. I'm not running around with a bow, you know? <laughs> You're not LARPing down the street, just right, like, right, hey. Right. But little do they know that I wish I was, you know? <laughs> Don't we all? It's what Renfest yeah. is for. Walk down the street and <laughs> Yes. I remember when Game of Thrones first came out, the, the show, and all of a sudden I go, hey, Stefan, have you heard of this show? And he just like, boom, 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 hit me with all the back. Did you know that they're supposed to be blue? But they can't because it's too absurd. <laughs> and it's like, I, I almost hate being that person, but I can't even stop myself. Like once it happens, it's already too late. Like, it was great. You know, Somebody will have the audacity to mention something that they like. And I'll be like, well, it wasn't even like that. <laughs> but I have all the facts and you don't. So listen. Right, right. <laughs> a horrible personality trait. And then I'm like on the wiki. Like I already know it. And I'm still like reading the wiki just to get my fix in or something. Yeah. It's horrible. It's fine. It's fine. I feel like, I feel like that's one of the reasons why we got along because you ask me about anything and I'm extreme. I'm not as factual as you are, but I will <laughs> tell you how I feel about it. And, and you I mean. just like, same thing. It's like, okay, listen, listen to this, okay? Don't do that. That's a bad idea. Here's why. <laughs> Here's the 20 million reasons why. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was like, this guy's fun. <laughs> yeah, we both come up with it right then and there. I'll ask you something. You'll be like, here's my reasoning. And I'll be like, love it. Didn't didn't need to go do anything else. Here we go. Let's have this convo. Let's have a two-hour conversation or debate, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anything that you think is truly important or truly needed to know about the theater community or the arts community what is some what are your two cents that you think the average um you know person should know the normies you know <laughs> yeah. i think that the biggest kind of misconception about the theater and the entertainment industry is like what people define as success mm -hmm. and i think that's something that i that most people really should take a step back because there are tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of performers all over this country that are making a living and doing their art. And just because you don't see them on TV, just because they're not Brad Pitt or something like that, doesn't mean that they're not able to contribute to their communities and contribute to the art and contribute to what they want to do. And I think that's my biggest like thing when people say like, you know, hey, you're, you know, what are you, an actor? And then it's like, well, what have you been in? And it's like, well, I've been in all of these things that you haven't seen, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't impactful for the people that did see it. Right. So I think there's a lot, there's a huge burying of like success. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's enough conversation about the people that are like you and Angelica that are doing your thing. You know what I mean? That you're having these interviews and you're constantly creating content and stuff. And that to me is just as important as something that I see on TV or something. Mm -hmm. and, that's something that the industry, that a lot of people that don't know the industry, that don't go to see like regional shows or don't mm -hmm. go to see, you know, touring children's shows. I did ch right. children's theater forever, but yeah. it got me my first apartment. I was paying my bills. I was a productive member of society doing that. And that was fine, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I think I would encourage young performers to know that, that there's way more, that success isn't only in the stars, but it's all the way in between. Yeah. You know? And I would encourage everyone that's watching stuff to understand that all of those people on that set have a very, you know, are doing what they love and doing something important to them. 
and that's hard to find. Yeah, yeah. We I was talking to Calypso about that on her episode that you know every every single aspect like the theater process starts two months before actors get there anything you see here. minimum <laughs> and it, there's just so much work that goes on with it because it's so it's such an educational tool that i think people don't notice because you know we talk about circumstance and the circumstances that the author gives you in between each line and mm -hmm. in the little details the the sub context of anything any little thing in, in their periods commas whatever and they wrote it for a reason it, it, it meant something to them you know so i feel like i feel like it's just such a tool with whether it's music art theater whatever whatever you do that's artistic to you mm -hmm. um there's just such fine circumstances that are so cool in between all of it that when you see the end result it's like oh my god i had no idea that you were related to shaka khan or like you know it's like something <laughs> random ends up being in there or, right, right. or i had no idea that you you've been through that in your life and that's why you wrote about this and and your brother cried when he saw it and da, 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 whatever you know Absolutely. Definitely. Enough people don't know about the process. They only see the product. Right. And there's so much process mm -hmm. before that product. And there's so much hard work that people just don't see. Yeah. You know, actors and singers, I mean, singers, they warm up their voices every day, whether they sing that day or not, you know? Dancers yeah. are working every day to keep in shape and to keep doing that. And actors are doing that with their emotional muscles and with their own creativity. And yeah. people don't see any of that. They only see the the five seconds you were on that TV, or the ten, you know, the ten seconds you walked in and the in the shot, whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a really good point. That's a really good thing to bring light to, for sure. So good for Calypso. Yeah, good for Calypso. <laughs> <laughs> you know, theater's theater's fun. Yes, we're very free love. We're very no judgment because art is art. You gotta give it credit, you know. Um, but it's it's ninety five percent work, five percent of downtime yep. I, th some people say 95 percent work five percent fun the whole thing's fun for me yeah i absolutely. don't care how little sleep i have if i've got drool going down my face whatever it is i don't care the whole process no matter how insane it makes me it's an obsession and that little five percent of downtime i'm like man i could really be like writing something or i could be like filming something <laughs> exactly i don't like the settling <laughs> what is this what is this that's why it's been so hard for us in this pandemic because it's been so much settling you know mm. it's been so much sitting because i mean none of us nobody that does theater likes to sit down and just do nothing we like to be running around we like to be on you know working on one show thinking about the next and auditioning for the third you yeah. know like that's that's the lifestyle that we've chosen you know we like to get no sleep during tech week you know, it's, yeah. it's what we've always loved and to lose all of that for six months has been so difficult for so many people. You yeah. Know, myself included, and I'm sure you as well. It's not been a walk in the park, you know? Yeah, switching to virtual was such a split decision of, I. it was literally just announced that we were in lockdown. Yeah. That it was March 21st or something that like mm -hmm. we heard. Yeah. And that day we were like, okay, we need to go virtual. That's it. We can't, we can't risk it because, you know, we're a small company already and mm -hmm. you just got to keep going. I mean, I don't have time to be like, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe I'll take seats out of my theater that doesn't exist. You know, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I can't really do not that. Yet, not yet. Not yet. Maybe. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Any donors out there. Um, if anyone's watching that has a theater. <laughs> We're really nice, I swear. What are you working on now? Anything you want to promote about yourself so people can look for you? Uh, sure. I mean, yeah. I guess. I mean, you know, I, I don't normally do a lot of self-promoting, so I guess this is the time, right? Yeah. Um, in the pandemic, uh, I've been doing a lot of writing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's been a lot of fun. I have written a one act called Boom Zoom Boom. Mm -hmm. And it's a one act, so I kind of leaned into the whole Zoom situation and just wrote a one act that should be performed on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And it's about the physical embodiments of all these other applications, and it's been a lot of fun. I've had two uh, professional readings from theater companies in South Florida, getting a lot of really good feedback. Um, I'm gonna try to produce it here, so keep an eye out for that. Um, probably gonna put it on some of my friends' comedy YouTube channels. I have a friend that just graduated from Second City, so I might tap into that. 
from Second City out here in LA. So I might as well tap into that and uh, see if we can get that going. Aside from that, I've written a pilot and I've been in, you know, lots of auditions and stuff. So stay tuned, more to come for yeah. sure. Yeah, anything involving social media or whatever about Stefan is going to be linked down below if you're on our YouTube. And then on our Instagram, his Instagram will be linked in there as well. So, but you know, you should look at like all of it. It's whatever. <laughs> um, cool. So thank you so much for being here with us. It's my pleasure. It's always great to see you guys. And I'm so, I'm so thrilled about all the work you guys are doing. I love supporting in any way that I can. I mean, you know, I was there at the beginning and to see how far it's come and how much it's grown, you know, keep getting those gigs and keep getting that word out there. Cause this, what you guys are doing is real and it's awesome. Thank you. And you're doing incredible. I love going through the gram and being like, oh my gosh, look at him working. Wow. Look at that. Look at his little voice set up. Uh, <laughs> you saw it. Yes. The whole Zadak clan is very proud of you and Ari and what you guys are doing out there. So it's very fun. Uh, so if you guys, again, want to check out more about Stefan, you can go down get downstairs and uh, just quickly collect those things. Uh, also, if you want to check out the description for any websites to educate yourselves on or any donations of people who might need help at this time. If you have any people who might need some help during this time, email us at info at thisisimprov.com and we'll add them to our list. We are also offering virtual classes. So go to www.thisisimprov.com to sign up for improv writing, team building, and personal classes. You can sign up today. Thank you very much. We also have a podcast called This Is Legends of Yesterday, where we talk about histories, mysteries, and ghost stories of Florida. So if you have a crazy, wacky, weird, or fun historical fact about Florida, you can listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And if you have that story, email it to us at info at this is improv.com or you can record yourself and send it to us and hear yourself on the podcast what mind-boggling thank you so much for joining us on this gloriousness of talk about it tuesdays have a beautiful taco tuesday everybody we will see you next time goodbye hello everybody my name is alexandra and i'm angelica and this is Legends of Yesterday, where we talk about histories, mysteries, and ghost stories of South Florida. And well, the only she's reason... trapped there, so it's like a purgatory kind of hell. What is around us? Then it's really made Davie such a such a special place.